When a small neutral country quietly built a fighter that embarrassed the world's most powerful air force, the Pentagon, nobody expected what came next. This is the story of the Gripen, cost-effective, clever, and shockingly capable. Stick around. By the end, you'll understand why superpowers suddenly stopped laughing. <laughs> Rapid montage. Gripen takeoff, cockpit close-ups, radar screens, U.S. jets in formation, headlines flashing, surprise, game changer. <clears throat> Welcome back to channel. If you like military tech that upends expectations, smash like and subscribe. We drop videos like this every week. Today, how Sweden's Gripen quietly rewrote the rules of air power. Sweden isn't trying to build the biggest jet. It's trying to build the smartest. Born during the Cold War, designed to survive, the Gripen was engineered around Swedish realities. A vast country, limited defense budget, and a need for a fighter that could operate from dispersed, short runways and keep flying when the going got ugly. Archival footage of early Gripen prototypes, Swedish cold weather exercises, dispersed road runway operations. Key points. Short field operations. Rapid turnaround. Minimal ground crew. Cost per flight hour much lower than top tier rivals. Instead of chasing raw speed or size, Saab, Sweden's prime contractor, focused on sensor fusion, modularity, and maintainability. The Gripen systems are built like Lego. Swap a module, get back into the air. That would later become crucial. Here's where Gripen starts to look like a strategic calculator, not just a plane. Advanced electronic warfare, open architecture avionics, and a tiny logistical footprint let it punch above its weight. AESA radar and sensor fusion networked data links for seamless cooperative engagement. Electronic warfare suite able to spoof or jam higher end systems. The net effect? A swarm of Gripen's sharing data can operate like a distributed system denying larger, single-platform opponents the decisive edge. In modern air combat, who sees first often wins, and Gripen is designed to share what it sees instantly. Trials and tender battles are when theory meets reality. Gripen's sales pitch wasn't just performance, it was risk reduction. And when countries with limited budgets needed something reliable, the Gripen rose on value, not bravado. From Sweden to South Africa, Thailand to the Czech Republic, Gripen's combination of affordability and capability attracted buyers. But it also drew scorn from established giants, especially when Gripen reliably beat expectations in exercises. That's when whispers started inside some defense circles. This little jet shouldn't be this disruptive. The Pentagon's shock over Sweden's Gripen wasn't about losing a battle. It was about realizing that their assumptions on modern air power could be wrong. For decades, the U.S. built jets on a simple equation. Bigger budgets equal better dominance. The Gripen flipped that logic. It showed that agility data fusion, and low operating costs could beat brute force. During simulated exercises and intelligence assessments, the Gripen's electronic warfare systems managed to jam or confuse high-end radar networks, something few expected from a budget jet. Its pilots exploited those systems with creative tactics, relying on information sharing rather than stealth alone. The Pentagon was surprised because the Gripen's success wasn't hardware magic. It was strategy. It was proof that innovation and efficiency could rival multi-billion dollar platforms. It signaled a new age of warfare where adaptability, not size, wins the day. When the dust settled after Gripen's surprising performances, the Pentagon and its allies faced a hard truth. Smaller nations could build fighters that delivered near-elite capability without billion-dollar budgets. 
That realization rippled across the defense world. In response, the U.S. and NATO partners started accelerating work on open architecture avionics, flexible EW systems, and modular upgrades, all hallmarks of the Gripen design philosophy. The focus shifted from massive, single-platform dominance to networked cooperation and cost-effective readiness. Defense contractors began rethinking their strategies. Instead of selling complexity, they started emphasizing adaptability and life cycle efficiency. In essence, Gripen's impact wasn't measured by combat kills, but by the way it forced superpowers to evolve. The Pentagon's adaptation proved that the embarrassment had turned into education. The era of colossal jets defining power was fading. The future would belong to those who could think, adapt, and innovate as quickly as Sweden had with the Gripen. Beyond the radar systems and avionics, the true edge of the Gripen story lies with the people behind it, the pilots and engineers who turned strategy into performance. Sweden's Air Force trained its Gripen pilots to think like network tacticians, not lone aces. They learned to use every electronic tool, every data link, and every ounce of the jet's agility to create unpredictable, coordinated attacks. Gripen pilots mastered operating from road bases, refueling in minutes, and adapting on the fly. Engineers designed maintenance systems so efficient that a small crew could have a jet ready again within 10 minutes. That human-machine partnership gave Sweden's Air Force something larger nations struggled to replicate, speed of decision. So did the Gripen actually humiliate the Pentagon? Headlines love drama, but the real story is richer. A small country's smart engineering forced a rethink in air power. If you want more deep dives like this, hit like, subscribe, and tell us in the comments, which underdog military system should we cover next? <laughs>